Kenan Malik, welcome to the Kreisky Forum. Your lecture is entitled Enlightenment and the Death of God. Those two concepts are usually not thought in the same sentence. Can you tell us about that? No Enlightenment philosopher ever talked about the death of God. It's a 19th century phrase. It comes to us through Nietzsche. Um, the reason why it's important, though, to think about the Enlightenment when we're talking about the death of God is that there are two aspects to the story of the death of God. One is the decline in religious belief. The other is the faith, the celebration of human capacities. One of the things we do these days is to overstate the decline in religious belief and undervalue the importance of faith in human capacities. And the importance of the Enlightenment is that the Enlightenment in a sense, was the hinge on which the way we think about humanity, about our capacities, our ability to do things, about progress, changed in European culture. And so it's important for me to rethink the idea of the death of God by looking again at the whole issue of human capacities and how our understanding of what humans are capable of doing on their own, without guidance from beyond, how that has changed over time and the importance of the Enlightenment in that process. Quite a lot of this series about, of lectures about the Enlightenment is built around questioning what the Enlightenment can still have in terms of relevance today. So do you think that the great criticism of the Enlightenment that dominated so much of 20th century thought had to do with this idea of the death of God? I think it has to do with the idea not of the death of God, but what we might call, if we want to continue using the theological language, the fall of man. In other words, the disaffection with ideas in uh, the, the idea of human capacities, the, the, the disbelief that humans could act on their own, the disenchantment with ideas of social transformation, all those issues... Um, became uh, central to, to thinking in the, in the 20th century and became central to our uh, turning away from the Enlightenment, being more critical of the Enlightenment. So again, in thinking about the death of God, not in terms of the, the, the decline in religious belief, but in terms of the, the, the faith in human capacities to... Um, to, to act without guidance from beyond, to be moral without having a, uh, a, a God to tell us what to do, to be right and wrong. In that sense, the Enlightenment again plays a crucial role in that story. There is widespread doubt today whether the Enlightenment has made us more or less human. And indeed, the Enlightenment heritage seems to have sapped a lot of, from beginning in a very optimistic way, seems to have sapped a lot of this optimism and human capacities. Do you think the Enlightenment still has to offer thoughts or ways forward for questions that very much occupy our societies today? You're right that in the post-Enlightenment world, we have become disenchanted with the idea that humans are capable of progress, of social progress, of moral progress. We've developed a much darker view of humans and of human nature. And we've lost that sense of humanism and optimism that infused uh, the 18th century. In some ways, of course, uh, it's a good thing. It's good that we take a more realistic view of what it is to be human and what humans are, are, are capable of doing. Uh, the, the darker side of, 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 of human nature as well as uh, the notion that humans are capable of progress, of, of change and so on. But at the same time, I think the loss of faith in human capacities, in human abilities to transform the world, leaves us in a world where um, we are marooned. Um, people, people today look for what I call ethical concrete, that is, 
because they've lost a sense of their own capacity to make judgments, uh, to th- work out what is right and wrong, to be able to transform the world for the better. So they look for external guarantors of uh, mor- the moral order and the social order. Sometimes it's God. So we've seen the, the, the uh, uh, return, the resurrection uh, of religion. Others look to science to do the same. So uh, there are many today who think that science can tell us what is right and wrong, uh, how to organise society. And what is lost there is, is the sense that human beings, us as both as individuals and as collectives, through our dialogue, our action, are able to create a better world. We've lost our own, a sense of our own moral responsibility uh, for the project of social change and moral betterment. And I think in that sense, the Enlightenment has a lot to teach us about uh, the problems we face today. Thank you.